first scene, we meet Armin, a man who is conducting interviews with high-ranking officials. Armin's inexperience is clear as he tries to control the camera and maintain appropriate focus on his subject. When Armin is finished, he recounts his job to his boss, only to discover that the camera had not been in recording mode the entire time. This enraged the boss, and he storms out of the chamber. Following that, we are properly introduced to our protagonist. Armin is an idle bachelor who lives alone in a modest apartment and is struggling financially. He demonstrates a lack of knowledge when it comes to women when he invites a girl called Rosa to his home. He plays pre music in an attempt to create a romantic environment. When Rosa asks to borrow his toothbrush, Armin declines and instead provides her with a fresh one. Rosa is irritated by this action, so she walks away without saying anything. In the following scenario, Armin goes to his parents' residence to see his sick grandma. Armin's personal life is a mess because his father abandoned his mother and he is now with his younger lover, Lilo. That night, Armin stays with his grandmother, resting his head on her shoulder and promising her that everything will be well. Armin resolves to visit his biological mother the following evening, despite his father's objections. He assumes his mother is expecting him. He arrives at his mother's house after a long travel to find her having a nice time with her pals. The image makes him feel rejected, and he walks away quietly, tears in his eyes. He then drives to the river's edge, where he sees people enthusiastically enjoying a cruise party, which heightens his loneliness. Armin wakes up in his car the next morning and decides to go to the nearest grocery store to get some food. When he walks in, he notices that the store is empty. He looks around and cries out for the cashier, but there is no one around to react. As a result of this, as a generous gesture, he picks various products and leaves money on the cashier's table. As he walks out of the supermarket, he spots a few motorcycles and automobiles with their engines still running at the petrol station. However, he pays little notice and drives away. Armin gradually develops apprehension as a result of the absolutely deserted roadway. Soon after, he encounters numerous abandoned scooters in the middle of the road. He attempts to contact his father but is unable to reach him due to an unexplainable sense. As panic sets in, he races back to his father's house. When he arrives, the door is locked from the inside, leading him to knock. Worry grows as there is no response, prompting him to aggressively break the entrance door. Inside, he only finds his grandmother's lifeless body lying on the bed. This frightens him and he begins shouting for aid, but no one responds. He has no choice but to enter the home of a neighbor named Lothar, where he only discovers the family dog, Cosmo. Armin returns home and muses, unable to fathom what is going on. His perplexity grows when he realizes his phone has no network coverage and the water taps have run dry. Soon after, he hears a disturbance coming from the front door. When I checked on it, he comes across Cosmo, who is injured and nearing the end of his life. Armin convinced that someone is to blame for all of this, grabs a weapon and travels to Lothar's house to confront the alleged intruder. However, his supposition is incorrect because there is no one there. The next morning, Armin improvises a shower with a bottle of water and then performs his grandmother's final ritual. He gathers all the books, copies, and papers, arranges them beneath his grandmother's bed, douses them in gasoline, and lights them on fire with a lighter. After that, he goes for a drive down an empty rural road. Along the road, there were numerous abandoned vehicles. He soon comes into an upmarket police sports car. Armin, who has never ridden in a nice car before, quickly jumps inside and fully enjoys the journey. After a while, he reaches a tunnel and comes across an overturned truck with stranded horses. He instantly frees the animals from their imprisonment since he feels sorry for them. The picture then shifts to a few years later where Armin is living the life of a farmer. He has built a wooden house out in the lonesome world's forest, where he raises a variety of birds and animals such as chickens, ducks, horses, and goats. He has clearly acclimated to solitary living as he sews clothes on his own, hunts for food, and cares for his animal companions. Aside from that, he is working on novel technology to generate power using water from a local river. Armin is awakened one night while sleeping by the sounds of a restless goat. When he checks on it, he discovers that the goat is in the process of giving birth. Armin observes the entire birthing process and feels a deep sense of delight. His joy, however, is short-lived. As the newborn goat is kidnapped by a jackal the next morning, Armin, feeling sorry for the mother goat, pursues the jackal with his gun. But his efforts are futile. Disappointed, he returns empty-handed and sits with the mother goat for a while reflecting on his loss. On one specific day, 
Armin rides his horse into the woods to forage for necessities. As he travels farther into the woods, he and his horse are attacked by a wild dog. Armin shoots the dog quickly. But in the process, he falls off his horse and suffers a head injury, leading him to lose consciousness. After a while, we observe someone approaching the area with a flashlight and examining the injured Armin. Armin regains consciousness in the morning, only to find himself wrapped in aluminum foil, keeping him warm. He has no idea how he became that way. He pauses for a moment to reflect before returning to his home. Later that night, Armin spots a station wagon approaching his house. Suspicious that there is a potential threat, he gets a rod as his weapon and hides behind a bush. Soon after, a woman named Kissy approaches him with a shotgun, demanding that he hand over his firearm. Because he is too afraid to attack, he submits and tosses the rod aside. Kissy also lowers her gun and walks back to her car. Armin awakens the next morning to find breakfast beside him. As he tries the food, he realizes how good it is, as it has been a long time since he has had such a feast. Kissy enters a few moments later and discovers a wound on his leg. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, she retrieves first aid equipment from her vehicle and attends to his injury. Later, when they sit down for a cup of coffee, Kissy wonders why Armin chose to live in this rural spot rather than in a city. In response, he explains that this location gives him a sense of belonging. He then asks Kissy if she has met any other humans, to which she responds that he is the first. Armin reaches out and grabs her hand as their talk continues, savoring the sensation of human contact after such a long time. They share a passionate kiss and soon become intimate, overjoyed to have discovered each other. They start a life together as a couple the next day, living in Armin's self-built house. Kissy and Armin are seen toiling in the field, absorbed in their labor in the next scene. During their labor, Kissy shares her traumatic experience in Syria. She describes being left in the vast Syrian desert after her vehicle broke down, enduring three agonizing days without a single drop of water. Furthermore, Kissy expresses her desire to visit Berlin, but Armin dismisses the city as monotonous and unpleasant. In addition to their regular activities, Armin invests time and energy to his latest invention, harnessing the power of river water to generate electricity. Despite repeated setbacks and failures, he perseveres and eventually succeeds in providing an adequate power source for their home. The couple appears to be living a great life together as the days pass. They work hard in the fields, share meals, and enjoy leisure activities like swimming in the adjacent river. Their blissful life, however, begins to deteriorate when Armin reveals his desire to have a child. Kiesi is adamantly opposed to the notion, claiming that she does not want to bring a child into this post-apocalyptic world. When Armin persists, she grows enraged and immediately leaves, leaving him alone once more. The next evening, as Armin sits down to eat, his attention is pulled to a recreational vehicle that appears near his house. He goes outside to investigate, only to find Kissy in the truck with a dog. Kissy exposes details about her prior life while the two converse. She reveals that she had been profoundly in love with a man for seven years and had hoped to create a family with him. However, he insisted on her waiting, leaving her in a condition of uncertainty. Then, one tragic day, his kid appeared unexpectedly in their doorway. Kissy claims she spent seven years of her life with a man she didn't actually know, culminating in sadness that forever altered her viewpoint. This experience seemed to have changed her into a resilient and self-sufficient person. Kissy also expresses her intention to accompany Armin to the south. He gently declines, explaining that he cannot leave his beloved animals behind. Later, the pair drives to a neighboring grocery store in search of refreshments. Armin is overjoyed with Kissy's homecoming, so he puts on some music and starts dancing with her. After a while of enjoying the occasion, the two of them return home, Armin looking happy but Kissy feeling melancholy. Something obviously bothers her. A tire on their RV unexpectedly punctures while they are driving. When Kissy notices this, she begs Armin to repair the tire by the next morning, confirming her intention to leave. Armin is saddened by this and wonders if she will return. Don't wait for me, says Kissy. She goes to bed when night falls, but Armin is restless. He simply stands in front of her, marveling at her lovely face. Kissy gets up in the morning and makes herself a cup of coffee. Just then, she comes across Armin's recipe book, which piques her interest. As she flips through its pages, she comes across a snapshot of Armin with his grandma, which makes her happy. At the same time, Armin returns her RV after successfully resolving the tire problem. He hands her the keys and warns her not to go faster than 80 miles per hour since the tires may get unstable. Soon after, Armin and Kissy share one more kiss, and she expresses her thanks to him for mending her tires and allowing her to depart. Armin stops her as she attempts to drive away. He makes an impulsive decision to accompany her since he does not want to be alone again. He asks her to hold her breath for a moment so that he can free all of his animals. With this request, he begins opening all of the cages and releasing the animals. Kissy, however, abruptly drives away, leaving him behind. I, 